Okay, so this is collisions, the covalent compounds portion, um, covalent bonds form between two nonmetals. So these are two things to the right side of the periodic table. So this is a fluorine atom. We're gonna drag the fluorine to this workspace. And notice that fluorine has seven valence electrons. Needs one more valence electron to be stable. These are paired electrons. They look like that. If I take another fluorine and put it out like this, notice that this fluorine also has seven valence electrons. It only needs one more valence electron to be stable. So since each one has one available spot and each one wants one more valence electron, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to turn this this direction so that they face each other, correct the orientation, and then we're gonna drag them so that now each fluorine has eight valence electrons around it. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Their covalent bond is formed. Once we have a covalent bond being formed, we can drag it here. Everything wants eight except for hydrogen and helium. And helium doesn't form bonds because it is a noble gas. So then we have our F2 molecule. That would be our formula. All right. So if we did it again, this in this case, we're going to take a chlorine atom. We're going to put it here. We're going to chlorine atom and put it there. We're going to rotate it so that they're the correct orientation. And then we can drag them together so that both chlorines have eight valence electrons around it. And so now, um, what if I need a double bond? What you can do is you can double tap. Or if we wanted to undo a bond, that's what we could do, double tap. That would undo our bond. We can drag it here. That's a chlorine molecule. Now, sometimes they're not the same size. So in this case, they're not the same size. But it's okay. They're not the same. You could still form a covalent bond because these are two nonmetals. So we still do the same process, rotate it so that they're oriented properly, join them together, and now we have fluorine chloride. Okay. Now, with hydrogen, hydrogen only wants two valence electrons, okay? So if each hydrogen has one valence electron to share, they can both have two valence electrons. So we can rotate these to face each other and drag them together, and now we'll have a hydrogen molecule. The same thing happens with oxygen and hydrogen. So we have high oxygen here and oxygen has six valence electrons, which means it wants two more valence electrons in order to be stable. If we take a hydrogen and another hydrogen, and we bond it with oxygen, what you'll see is that since these are in the correct orientation, I could bring them together. And I have to turn this to make it the correct orientation. I could bring that together. And I just formed a water molecule, which is a polar compound. But you can see that oxygen now has eight valence electrons around it and hydrogen has two, only two. And so it's stable. We can put it in the file here. Okay. And so what you're going to do is you're going to repeat this process over and over and over again until you complete the levels. So let's go ahead and restart this level. We're going to restart this level so you can see it. And in this case, um, all these atoms to complete the targets below. So we're going to do sulfur first. Sulfur has six valence electrons, which means it wants two more valence electrons to be stable. So we're going to take this one out of here. We're going to take this one out of here. We're going to rotate this guy this direction. And we're going to put this one here. Okay, and I have a molecule that looks like that. Notice the shape, the molecular shape, it's bent. Now, this is going to have the same number of atoms, but something's going to happen. Something interesting is going to happen. 
So if I rotate this one this direction, and I rotate this one this direction, I can bring this hydrogen here, I bring this hydrogen here. Actually, it's not the same number of atoms. There's one more hydrogen. In this case, we have a different shape. All right. All right, so if we did carbon, for example, carbon has four valence electrons in range in three domains. Okay, so it only has four. So double tap this domain containing two electrons to pin a fourth domain. So now we have four domains. We have to split one of the domains. Okay, so now we have one with uh, one domain in each or one electron in each domain. And now I have to take out four hydrogens and then covalently bond it to the carbon. Okay. And lastly, there's silicon. Remember, we've got to double tap the domain to split it. I'm sorry, double tap the dom domain to create an empty domain in this case, since it wants us to create an empty domain. And now we can put something, we can transfer electrons. So we're going to transfer one of those electrons to that empty domain. And it's the same process. So in this case, I have fluorine that I'm going to bond with it. And each of these fluorines has to be oriented properly in order to bond properly. So I'm going to take that fluorine and put it there. Take, oops, that doesn't work. I'm going to turn this and put it there. Take this guy. And put it there. Put this one and turn it. And now, if you look, everything has eight valence electrons around it, and this will be complete. Okay.